Welcome back. Today we are going to do a tutorial that I've actually had a couple of requests for, um, and that is chipped armor. Um, the chipped armor effect uh, that they did on this Halo figure, as well as on my custom Mandalorian. Um, yeah, I had a couple of requests when I posted this guy originally, and I just never got around to it. And then when I posted her, I figured it was time to do it. Um, so, hopefully the camera is focusing properly on this. So, you can see we've got multiple layers here. So here you've got the silver showing through, but you can see some black as well underneath the orange. So, that's the whole thing with this technique, is to build up layers. Um, I think you can see it better on this guy. Because you can actually see it, well, I can see it, hopefully you can see it, um, where there are actual physical layers there, where you can actually see the difference between the silver, the That's something that you won't get if you're just and then the um, dry brushing on highlights. the silver, or painting on these silver parts after you've done the full paint job. So what we are going to do is we're going to use this McFarlane uh, Fortnite figure. And I'm just going to do the chest piece here. This, um, basically this part here. We're just going to do that piece just for the purposes of the tutorial. The ultimate goal with this guy is he's going to be the background character in a Star Wars diorama. I found out that the uh, X-Wing Luke helmet actually fits perfectly on this head. Um, so eventually I'm going to customize the helmet as well, um, sort of like I did with these two for other custom characters I did. Um, these are repainted and then uh, I designed and printed some custom water slide decals uh, for the markings. Anyways, that's what's going to happen to him eventually. But to start off, we're just going to um, paint his chest piece. Um, Normally, like I did with the Halo and the uh, the Mando figures, um, I would start by painting the area silver, um, but obviously this is already silver, so I'm just going to use the base figure as the base coat. Um, I've already um, given this guy a wash, um, like an actual wash, like with soap and water. Um, like I've said in previous videos, um, you'll get better paint adhesion with a clean figure. Um, so I've washed him, and then I've sprayed him with my uh, UV-resistant matte clear acrylic coating, um, again, to give the paint something to adhere to. So unlike the other videos that I've done, this one does include one material that is, I would call it intermediate, simply because it's not something that you can get at Walmart or Michaels or that kind of stuff, um, and it's this. Um, liquid mask. Um, this is the Green Stuff World brand. Um, this you can get at um, gaming shops, um, like the kind of store that would sell uh, Warhammer, uh, X-Wing, and like the Citadel paints and that kind of stuff. Um, it doesn't need to be this brand. Any kind of liquid mask should work. Um, this just happened to be the one that I have. Um, you will need something to cut your um, tape with. So obviously you're going to need some kind of masking tape. Um, I this, I'm using this vinyl tape because I already have it. Um, the painter's tape that you get from uh, Home Depot or any uh, home improvement store will work just fine. Obviously something to cut the tape with. Paintbrush, that should be obvious. Paint. Uh, and some kind of uh, non-sharp but still uh, rigid tool um, that we will need to peel the mask off later. So what we're going to do with this guy is we're going to paint this whole section basically across here down this whole front piece and then this side here again. Um, we're going to paint that white and then what we're going to do is use the tape to mask off a center stripe and two angled side pieces here. So we're going to end up with essentially a shape in the center, kind of like a 501st clone trooper. Um, 
and then the parts like that center piece and the angled pieces are going to stay white and then these two side pieces are going to be red. Uh, eventually I'll do something similar with his shoulders um, and probably uh, something with his biceps as well but tutorial I'm just going to do his chest piece. Okay so we're going to take our liquid mask and I have to open it with pliers because they didn't close it properly last time, and so some of the stuff solidified in the uh, <laughs> in the threads. Um, as you can see, it does have a tendency to glomp up because it is basically liquid latex. So you want to get quite a bit off the brush. It does come with a brush. Um, I would not recommend using your own paint brushes to apply this because like I said, it is essentially liquid latex, so it glomps up. Um, okay, so what you want to do is apply this just in little bits to areas where there would be chipping or wear. And again, we're only doing this centerpiece. So I'm just looking at edges right now. A little bit more. So I figure there would be a lot of wear up at the top. And what we're doing here is Anything that we paint this stuff onto is going to stay silver. So this is like the the bottom layer of our of our wear patterns. We'll put a little bit here. So how much you put on will depend on how much silver you want to show through. So I think that's actually pretty good for us right now um, for his base uh, wear pattern. Um, so I'm going to try and close this properly so I don't <laughs> have to open it with pliers next time. Um, generally what I will do is wait for this to dry. It only takes about 10 minutes to dry. Um, and then I will do a second layer uh, on the same pattern just uh, to give me that much extra um, dimensionality for when I'm peeling it off. Just makes it easier to uh, to see what parts uh, need to peel and what is the standard paint. Um, if you don't have or can't find this kind of stuff, um, you can use the standard green painters tape uh, for a similar effect. What you'd want to do, um, I just I prefer doing it this way. Um, but what you would do is you would take the painter's tape and then just tear it into tiny pieces and then layer those pieces on, like say, oh, my painter's tape is very old and is losing its adhesion. So there's your first piece. So then you would take, uh, you would rip off a little tiny second piece. Again, these pieces are bigger than I normally would do with this technique. Um, but then just layer them. So you end up with uh, random kind of jagged patterns around your edge. Uh, and then you can do it that way um, if you can't find uh, the liquid mask. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes. So I'm going to uh, put on a little bit more uh, of the masking fluid. Uh, just on a couple of the larger areas. To, like I said, this isn't, this doesn't necessarily affect how it ends up looking. It just, by building it up a little bit, it makes it easier to, uh, to peel off after you've had your multiple layers of paint on top of it. So again, we'll sit that to dry, and while while your mask is drying, it's a good time to do your figure out your uh, paint situation, get your diluted paint. Um, I've already 
mixed mine up. I'm just going to add a little bit more water. You want it to be, you want your paint to essentially be the consistency of milk. Um, yeah. Sorry, the paint I'm using is quite old, so it's got a bit of clumps in it. But we can work around that. And the idea is, again, to build up layers. Uh, so you want to have a very thin paint um, so that uh, you're not just glomping out on top of, uh, of your figure so that you're not messing up any detail. But also um, by doing multiple layers of thin paint as opposed to one thick layer, um, you will, you'll get a nicer finish. Um, you'll have fewer brush strokes. Um, it'll just look nicer overall. So we're going to start the painting process here. Again, I'm going to take my really diluted paint and do the entire chest piece here. Um, sometimes, oh, this is okay. Sometimes when you're painting directly on uh, the plastic of a figure, um, your paints will sometimes beat up a little bit, uh, which is fine uh, for a base coat. Uh, it'll usually, the second coat will usually be fine. Uh, but as you can see, it's very, it's a very diluted paint right now. Um, and that's what we want. We want to build up layers. And you can see I'm just painting right over top of this masking fluid. And I'm not terribly concerned with brush strokes or anything at this point, because that's the whole reason we're doing multiple coats. And I'm just going to avoid the, that center or the, that square piece for now because the plan for that is that it will be a gloss black anyways. So I'm not concerned with whether I paint it, don't paint it. Doesn't really matter. I peeled up a little bit of that. I was pressing a little too hard with my brush. And if you're wondering why I'm painting the entire thing white when we've said that part of it is going to be red, it gets back to the whole layers thing. Um, so let me finish this a little bit here and I will show you what I mean. Okay, so that's the first coat. It looks pretty crappy, but it's the first coat, so nobody gives a damn. Um, so, building up the layers. So, when I was doing this Mandalorian, the first coat, obviously I said the first coat was silver, but we didn't need to do that with this guy. Um, then, this off-white, I painted all of the armor pieces. Um, the, like These three pieces here, we'll use as our examples. Painted them all with completely with the off-white. And then... I used more masking fluid. So you can see, so the masking fluid would have been here with this chip piece here. Actually, we use here as our example, it's clearer. So first layer of masking was this over top of the silver. Then when I finished painting the off-white, I used more masking fluid. So you can see here, and a little bit here, and a little bit there. Um, where I used the second layer of masking fluid and then when it pulled off, and then I painted, then I masked off the straight lines for the green. And then once everything was dry, I peeled off the two layers of masking fluid, exposing the silver, but then also exposing some of the off-white under the green to give it that extra layer of realism and to give it physical layers that you could actually see the paint having chipped off. So we're just going to let this guy dry. Um, I'm not going to film the entire process of doing layer upon layer upon layer of white because I don't actually want to, and you don't want to watch it. 